is and always is. Hey, by the way, we certainly are taking donations for the Rich Bowling campaign, of course, going for just 18. Is he going to be our next senator tonight? Yeah. Take donations. Our friend Christian Adams is uh, also signing his book, a $50 donation, 50 plus. So if you got 50 or you got more, and we hope you have more, then our friend Christian Adams, who, uh, well, he's been in Washington. He knows what's what. His book is uh, for sale. You can get it tonight for donations to the Rich Bowling Campaign. Not only can you get it, we will get you one better than Amazon.com. We'll get it personally autographed for you by the author himself. So there you go. Fifty dollars or more, of course, the Rich Bowling Campaign. Now, uh, and Chris is jumping on the Rich Bowling Campaign as well for this 18, guys. So make sure you do that as well. Enjoy your Hudson's in a few minutes. We're gonna meet the. The senator to be, right? Senator to be, is that right? Yeah. And of course, if you don't have cash in, we certainly do take credit cards as well, so don't be scared off if you say, you know what? I don't have no cash. You're good to go. If you got plastic, we have got it to go right here. Go up and see your friends right here by the pony, by a Christian. We will be happy to slide your credit card. Very secure, very safe and very much in support of Rich Bowling for District 18 for the state of South Carolina, the senatorial race. Guys, enjoy your dinner. And Sassy and Fulton, these guys right here move the line in about five minutes or so. We're gonna get things started tonight as we try to raise money and support for the very next senator for District 18 in Lexington County. That is Rich Bowling, right everybody? Thank you so much for coming out. Of course, Hudson's here supporting, and what a great night tonight as well. It's about perfect weather. It's good, a little warm, but I'd rather have this than the cold. It could be six inches of snow here in early April. I'm just saying. A couple of minutes away, folks. This will be the audience participation portion of the evening. One more time. Who loves Rich Bowling? And maybe because of the food coma, but who loves Hudson's barbecue, right? Gosh, my name, guys, is Tyler Ryan, and uh, you know I'm proud to be a friend of Rich. I met Rich at a bar down the street here about oh gosh, I don't know, four years, several years ago, anyway. And uh, man, I have known this guy for a long time. He has always, always, always been a straight shooter. He really has. Uh, he's just a real good guy, solid for me as a friend, solid in business. Again, for me. But uh, he's a really great guy. If you don't know Rich Bowling, you don't know what really he's about. He's been an attorney since 1993, so it's been a minute or two that he's been practicing law for us. Uh, he's had a law office right here in Lexington since 1998, and he probably doesn't want to think about that, but that's like 15 years, bro. You're getting old, man. You're getting old. He, of course, is a uh, United States Marine as well. Uh, he does concert on criminal defense, real estate, probate court as well. He's also a member of the community. Y'all y'all here, you know Rich. I really don't need to tell you this, because you know him if you're here tonight. Uh, but a stand-up guy, a member of the community, and somebody that I would love to say that is my senator. Please welcome Rich Bowling. Thank y'all very much. Um, let me just get my act together here, which is always a good idea if we're gonna try to do something. TJ, where are you when I need you? I'm right By here. By the way, I want to uh, initially I want to thank a bunch of people and I put them in order. Now this is a, uh, a particular order. First and foremost, I want to thank my wife. Right here. Why don't you come up here? Come here. <laughs> and I want to thank my wife. She is definitely a better half. It makes me uh, look bad though compared to her. But anyway, this is Lisa. We uh, on March 23rd was our 29th year from when we started dating, wow. and, uh, and we've been married 18 years. And I know she don't want to stay up here. Uh, the, the second, the second uh, set of people I need, I need to thank are my two paralegals, T.J. Anderson and Sandra, who uh, who have been running the office without me uh, since I've been trying to become the next senator, I've been kind of negligent to a certain extent. And they have been taking care of a lot of things and carrying a lot of weight for me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you both. Um, and then, of course, you have to thank Hudson's for the great food and uh, accommodating. Uh, and, uh, 
I told them I had no idea who was coming or how many, and uh, we just have to play it by ear, and they rolled with it, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Robin, wherever you are, and Clint and the rest of the staff, and, and please remember to tip them. Um, any money you leave on the table, I will not contribute to the bone campaign. I will give it to make sure that the wait staff and the servers and the people that have helped us here at Hudson Kid. Um, the next person I want to thank are, uh, is Gavin Smith. And I'm not sure where he is, but you all see him. He looks like he is in middle school, but he's not. He's, he's my campaign manager and he's doing a great job and I really appreciate all the hard work. He's the one that made this happen. Um, I've also had a bunch of uh, volunteers that have been working with me, and um, I want to point out uh, Elizabeth Pranamar, and where is she? She's probably taking a break. Oh, there she is, and she's uh, been involved in my office for the last couple weeks and been very instrumental in making this happen. Thank you, and also thank you to all the people that helped with the sign in, and the signs, and the table set, the displays, and everything. Thank you all. And uh, I want to thank our AV guy, Thomas Moore, wherever he is. And everyone that came out tonight, I want to thank you especially. So let me get to my speech, and uh, I will uh, hopefully convince you that I'm the man for the job. Uh, I'm very happy right now to announce my candidacy for the South Carolina State Senate representing District 18. I'm thrilled to know that there's this kind of support for the ideas that I represent. I have no illusions about me being anything extraordinary. I believe more realistically that I am merely the proverbial everyman who, because of my life circumstances, can advocate for the issues that we all hold dear. And I'm sure that, like me, you are tired of yelling at your television as you regularly hear reports of government spending more of our money on things that don't, we don't want and we don't need on boondoggles that don't work, on waste, fraud, and abuse, and then raising our taxes to pay for it. We can do better. I am running to represent the thousands of people who can't understand why the obvious, common sense answers to these problems aren't applied. I want to get into the Senate to be known as the whirlwind who came in and made my mark by constantly nagging, whining, praying, pushing, and pressing to the point of irritating the Senate leadership to eliminate unnecessary and expensive departments, bureaus, commissions, laws, rules, regulations, requirements, taxes, fines, fees, fine print, and the general aggravation of all in the world. Do we really need the government to tell us what kind of light bulbs to use, or how much water we need for a successful flush, how tall our grass should be, and on and on, surely we can do better. As Thomas Jefferson said, the government is best which governs least. This concept has been a passion of mine since I was in high school civics class and I learned about checks and balances, enumerated powers, and the various roles of the state and the federal government. I had a principal in the Christian high school I attended, Mrs. Norton, my uh, in-laws who are here tonight, over here at this table to the left. Uh, they will remember Mrs. Norton, and she had a saying that said, the, the more rules we make, the more rule breakers we make. Her idea was that we, did, we should expect people to be responsible and respectful, hold them to that standard, but don't try to micromanage their lives. My passion for limited constitutional government is what motivated me to go to law school so I could be better equipped to fight against this ever-expanding government from the inside. Unfortunately, also, as Thomas Jefferson said, the natural progress of things is for liberty to yield and government to gain ground. We must recognize that neither Washington nor Columbia can change the laws of nature or the laws of economics. We cannot continue to operate with huge deficits, with overtaxed and overregulated citizens, and expect to avoid the inevitable consequences. The laws of nature and economics will assert themselves, whether we're ready or not. We can learn the hard way, like Greece is now, or we can be wise, make some reasonable fiscal decisions and some potentially painful cuts, but do it on our own schedule and of our own choosing and learn the easy way. I think we should learn the easy way. We must get the government out of the way of hardworking and productive citizens and allow us to fail or succeed on our own merits.
and we must not punish those who succeed and reward those who don't even try. I do not want the government to provide my food, shelter, clothing, health care, entertainment, education, or the myriad of other benefits with which they try to buy my vote. And I definitely don't want them to take half my income to pay for these benefits. We can do better. If I am elected, I commit to you that I will be tireless in reviewing government programs and finding ways to eliminate them where possible, or at least improving them, and returning many of those functions to the private sector. I will also commit to funding to reduce the actual budget of the state as an adjunct to reducing its role in our lives. I know at my house we reduced our spending and consumption in response to the weak economy. Unfortunately, South Carolina actually has a bigger budget this year than they did last year, which was bigger than the year before. That means the government is now taking a higher percentage of our production because the economy has gotten smaller. We can definitely do better. I could go on and on about all the problems we have with the government, but this is supposed to be a fun night. I think it's been fun so far. And instead, being the eternal optimist that I am, I want to focus on the campaign ahead and the work that we have to do to win in June. So please make sure that you take the R sign, a bumper sticker, you leave us your name and uh, your contact information. And let's, let's take this thing to, to uh, the incumbent and make some changes. And thank you again very much for coming out. I really appreciate it, and I think we can win. Thank you all. yet for real. Yeah. It's a nice night. It's a perfect, uh, what, today Tuesday? It used to be 24 night. It's not 24 anymore, I suppose, but it's a great night beer at Hudson Barbecue. We've got a very special guest speaker as well. Now, you know, it's great when you are, uh, you want to run for Senate, of course. Politics is the foundation of our Constitution in this country that any man can raise up and be the president, right? Anybody at all? Anybody can be a state senator, a U.S. senator. You can do it, I promise. But it sure is nice when you have somebody with a little national notoriety behind you. Our speaker tonight, this man, if you follow politics, you might know there was, a, there was somebody who was elected to the, uh, the Office of Presidents a while ago. And uh, there may be a little bit of a gray area in that. And he's a prosecutor who spent a lot of time in the Department of Justice, a very close personal associate of Eric Holder. Would that be fair to say, sir? I said associate. I said associate. Fair enough. Uh, he's written a book. Uh, certainly, uh, he feels Republican views and, and how things are going right now is maybe not probably the way we need to go. Please welcome the author of the book. It is right here. It is called Injustice from Washington, D.C., our friend Jay Christian. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for coming out here. Uh, what a... I left this morning, I dropped my kids off at school in Alexandria, Virginia, and I kept heading south. Uh, and, and I'll tell you why uh, I, I feel uh, that it was worth coming here, uh, because Rich is a special kind of guy. I've known him for 22 years and we went to law school together, and nobody works harder than Rich Bowling. I'm telling you, nobody works harder at politics, at school, or this campaign than Rich Boland. He will outwork anybody, and he's gonna outwork any opponent he has in this primary. Uh, I remember back in 2000, uh, I was down in Florida helping the Bush campaign, uh, and I said, Rich, uh, why don't you come on down here and help us put out signs? And in October of 2000, wouldn't you know, Rich knows where to ride to the sound of the guns, because he came down to Palm Beach County with me, and we must have put out about 3,000 signs for Bush Cheney. And I keep thinking to myself, he made the difference. It wasn't the butterfly ballot, it was Rich Bull. But Rich this year, I, I want to tell you guys, you don't know this because it's, it's you know, all behind the scenes. But Rich has been leading the way in a very quiet way uh, for election integrity. Uh, I'm intimately involved. I used to be in the voting section of the Justice Department. I brought the case you may have heard against the new Black Panther Party. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But Rich, uh, you know, this, this Justice Department is not a fan of voter ID. Uh, this Justice Department blocked your voter ID 
uh, the place where I used to work, the voting section. And I remember calling Rich uh, months ago. And I said, Rich, people in South Carolina are not going to understand what's going to happen. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Eric Holder is going to block South Carolina voter ID. And I was working with Senator Campson from down in Charleston to help him draft that bill in the Senate. And Rich did something that uh, was very helpful at the time. He got on the phone with Alan Wilson. And he was telling Alan Wilson months before the bill even passed that South Carolina needed to go straight to court to get their voter ID approved under the Voting Rights Act. Because if they went to Eric Holder, it would get rejected. And Rich knew that before the bill even got passed and was telling the Attorney General's office that's what they needed to do. And Rich was right. Because that's exactly what happened. Eric Holder blocked your voter ID law. Um, the Black Panthers. I was working at the, Air Pol at the Justice Department on the day that President Obama was elected. I was manning the Washington desk. You guys have probably all seen the video of the Black Panthers stalking in front of the polls in Philadelphia. Well, I brought that case along with three other attorneys at the voting section, voter intimidation case. The Black Panthers never answered the case. And if you ever got a parking ticket, you know what that means when you don't reply. Uh, and so we had a default against the Black Panthers. And the Air Holder Justice Department ordered us to dismiss the case. And that's how we got where we are. And I will tell you there is a radicalism in this administration that staggers the imagination. Of course, I wrote a whole book about it. Um, I should mention, since no one else has, I'll be signing it after this. Uh, and you all can come up. I'll be right here. And I think we have probably about 20 or 30 copies left. Um, there's a radicalism in this Justice Department. I like to say when I give speeches, I wish we had Bill Clinton back. Right? That would be an improvement if we had Bill Clinton. Give me Bill Clinton. And the Black Panther case was just the tip of the iceberg. South Carolina voter ID was the bottom of the iceberg. Texas voter ID was blocked. This administration is hostile to election integrity measures. And you're going to see this in this election. I've written about it extensively. But I was subpoenaed, along with the other attorneys, to testify about the Black Panther dismissal. And I'm going to tell you something about Rich Bowling. If you ever watch the, the video of my testimony before the Civil Rights Commission, there's a guy standing there next to me at the table, and that's my counsel, Rich Bowler. He came the whole way up to Washington to help work on that Black Panther dismissal case. And I will never forget it. In my book, Rich is throughout the book. And I, in the acknowledgments, I thank Rich, uh, in a way I'll do it publicly, because you can read it, that for 22 years, Rich has sharpened me like iron sharpens iron, because he knows and loves this country. And I hope all of you can do everything you can for him. Uh, I, I'll tell you straight up. My wife and I wrote a check to Rich in the maximum amount. I'm trying to figure out if I can get my cat to write a check. I'm, I'm told we can't do this. But I hope all of you can help Rich out because he's going to need help. And please, please do everything you can for him. Uh, this is a, a real top flight guy. And he will serve you proudly if he's elected to the South Carolina Senate. Thank you all very much for coming out, and I'm happy to sign it. First announcements, guys. Of course, uh, for a donation of $50 or more, you can get an autographed book. It's called Injustice. It's right there. You can often see us here at the head table. And uh, you can get that book taken home for a donation right directly to the Rich Bowling campaign, $50 or more. We're going to limit you to $50, I'm just saying. Also, we would love for you, if you've got one of those fancy smartphones, and I know you do, one of those fancy cell phones, it looks, I got mine in here somewhere, it looks like this. You can text the word BOLIN, B-O-L-E-N, BOLIN, to 99000. BOLIN to 99000. We're not going to take any money. He's not going to take any money from you. Just want to get away for folks who support Rich Bolin for, uh, for them to be able to communicate with you. Again, Bolin to 99000. Also, if you are supported tonight, you've been enjoying this great food, you've hung out with us for a few hours in the hot, hot Tuesday nights, please make sure you take a sign home with you. We've got a lot of yard signs outside as well. They've been out there making them ready for you to take home and say, you know what? I support Rich Bolin. Who supports Rich Bolin, by the way? He's like Rain Man when it comes to numbers. He's going to be counting those and counting signs. It means you got to take one home. You got that? 
Guys, one more time, thank you for coming out tonight. Hey, let me interrupt you. Uh, let's all give Tyler Ryan a big round of applause. This guy made it happen. We had a lot of fun. It was really fun. This is my future of politics. I love politics. I can't be the front guy because I go too many skeletons. I will just stand behind the race and say, there you go. All right? it's, a, it's a true story. Guys, thank you again for coming out. It's a very fun. It's a personal friend of mine. I'm here because I personally am a friend of Rich. I personally support him. And uh, I think it's a great situation for all of us. So guys, one more time, thank you so much again. Christian uh, Adams, buy a book, $50. He's going back to Washington tonight. Here's your opportunity. Thanks for coming out. One time, of course, for the Hudson's and the staff. Please get your uh, hands together. Yeah. We would like, hey, y'all got signs in your hands? Who has a sign in their hand? Well, not enough people. And you know what? Table. If you got a sign, put it up because uh, Tom is here from Einstein Media. is going to take that picture real quick. We're going to make her famous. Hold it up. He's going to take some pictures. Hang on. Here he goes. Kids and their their fancy little cell phones and whatnot. There you go, guys. All right, one more time for Rich Bull. All right, your next letter. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and supporting the Hudson's and. Uh, and don't forget to take your waitresses, guys, because they took care of you as well. So please take care of them. Have a great night.